much. Let's return to Air France KLM. We've had, well, they told us they're going to splurge on capacity. They're going to step up the cost cutting in order to defend the market share. Europe's biggest carrier will boost seating by as much as 4%. This after the full year operating profit jumped 42% in 2017. Frédéric Gagy joins me now. He's a CFO. Uh, joins us for an exclusive conversation from our Paris bureau. Good to see you this morning, Frédéric. Well done on the numbers. You're adding capacity, sir, of 4%. You're taking the fight to the runways of Europe. That's a risky strategy. Do you risk demolishing uh, capacity? Do you risk uh, fares getting pushed lower? No, I think that to today you see that the market is, is not bad. There is some demand in the sense that passengers are there. If you look, the booking load factor forward, they are increasing compared to last year. So I think that there is demand and, uh, of course, for that, will continue to grow in 2018. So we have indicated that we'll grow by between 4 and 5 percent concerning the network activity of Air France KLM. So we have to be present on the market. We have developed many, many uh, projects in 2017, and now we have to take the benefit from this, uh, from this project to continue the profitable growth of the group. Where are you most optimistic about? Because we're seeing uh, low-cost uh, offerings come in right there in, in your domestic play in Paris from Norwegian, from BA, in terms of low-cost across the Atlantic. Is that something that you would consider perhaps taking the fight right to that and bringing in a low-cost proposition there? Yeah, you know, in the airlines industry, we know that there is an extremely fierce competition. Huh? That the life is his network. It is what it is the industry. It is what it's making working in the industry interesting. And of course, if you see the development of the long haul low cost out of Paris, it will be a new challenge for Air France and KLM out of Amsterdam. Uh, that's why we have developed all this project last year, uh, reinforcing the alliance with Delta, uh, taking a, a stake into uh, Virgin Atlantic, uh, creating more commercial links with China Eastern, with, uh, with Jet Airways in India. So all these projects are also focused on this, uh, uh, the resolution of this type of, of competition, be more present in the alliance such that we are better, you are offering better service for the clients and we are more competitive and we're in a better position to, to compete with uh, the new low-cost carrier uh, out, of, uh, out of Amsterdam or, or Paris. It is exactly the strategy we have developed. We have not yet the project to, to enter into, uh, in, into this sector, but do not forget that many of our seats are at a price which is totally comparable to what is offered by, uh, by the low-cost long-haul carriers. And we have also developed, for example, in the North Atlantic, a new fare system when you are providing to the clients flying in economy various fares. They can travel without baggage, with only one luggage. And depending on the category of fare uh, they choose, uh, they pay a quite, quite low, uh, low price for, for, for their tickets. So I think that we are also developing, through the fare system, products which are attractive for the clients. Frederick, you strike me, it's interesting, I've had two CFOs, you and, and the Ryanair CFO. He was a lot more cautionary. He was a lot more stand-backish. He's worried about the price of oil. He's worried about his ability to pass on the cost side to the passenger. You don't strike me as saying the same thing. Are you confident that you're going to be able to pass on those, those costs, those fuel costs to the passenger? No, what, what, what the chief of Ryanair said is that it, you will need probably 12 months because to be, before to be able sorry, to transfer part of the increase of the cost of the fuel into the ticket price. Two remarks. First, Ryanair is just a, a short-haul company, so it is not exactly the same if you compare to Air France KLM, which have an extended long-haul network. Second, I have only indicated, or we have only indicated in the press release, <coughs> that, the <coughs> that the unit revenue is expected to be positive for the first quarter. So it means that we have not given any indication for the rest of the year. And we have based this is the first command concerning the unit revenue of the first quarter of 2018, based on the evolution of the bookings we have today in our system. So I think that we continue to be cautious also. Uh, I think the situation in the medium haul Europe, where the competition is even more fierce than in long haul, 
Uh, I can understand the situation or the appreciation of the CFO of, uh, of a low-cost company, uh, but we have just given indication of the unit revenue for the first quarter of the year, and it is, see, the positive evolution is mainly linked to what is happening on the long-haul network. Okay, um, with all of the changes that are going on domestically around Europe, I suppose the question is, um, are you interested in buying any parts of Alitalia? The position of France KLM is the following. Uh, Alitalia is the all partner of Air France KLM. <clears throat> it is also a partner of, of Delta Airlines in the GV we have on the North Atlantic with Delta, Air France, KLM, Alitalia, and today uh, <clears throat> Virgin Atlantic. So we, we cannot be totally uninterested by what is happening uh, concerning Alitalia. If Alitalia in the future is able to continue to be a partner of the GV, it will be great. So which means that we are interested on what is happening concerning Alitalia. But it doesn't mean that we will uh, be involved in the equity of the company. So we have to follow the file. And clearly, if it's possible to continue to have Alitalia in the GV or as a partner, it would be great. But it not necessarily implies that we will enter into the equity of Alitalia, of course. Can I push you a little bit? Have you had any initial discussions with Alitalia, even just if it's a coffee? We had some discussion in Alitalia in the last month, but it was really based on the uh, North Atlantic joint venture. So we are obliged to have this discussion regularly. So don't believe always what is in the newspaper. We have not made any offer concerning Alitalia, but we are speaking with them concerning the uh, GV on the North Atlantic because they are today a partner of Delta Air France KLM. Finally, Frederick, let's just wrap this up. Uh, you've had a good set of numbers. You're adding capacity. Um, in, in terms of Europe, is there more consolidation? In your industry, do you need to see more consolidation after the likes of Air Berlin, Alitalia? Is there more to come? Yeah, of course, there is consolidation. If you judge, by the way, the situation is in North America and in Europe, you see the difference of profitability, which is clearly linked to the fact that there has been more consolidation in the U.S., so clearly, I believe that it will continue in, in, in Europe. Last year, we had many events. Huh? We had, uh, for example, Monarch, uh, Air Berlin. And Air France KLM has participated to this movement, for example, by taking the stake into Virgin Atlantic, so which is also one movement toward consolidation. So we believe in consolidation. We think that it is vital for this industry, which is still too uh, fragmented. And the last year, for example, with the Virgin uh, operation, we have participated to this movement. And we will see what happens in the, in, in the future. But clearly, consolidation is key in a too fragmented uh, industry.